there everybody, this is Miss Nelson here and today we are doing lesson 6.6 .6 in our 4th grade Florida Go Math book. Lesson 6.6 .6 is called Comparing Fractions Using Benchmarks. So what we're going to do is we're just going to go ahead and get started with the um, lesson. Let me go ahead and get my pencil here. Okay. And it says, Zach made a popcorn snack. He mixed 5 eighths gallon of popcorn with 1 half gallon of dried apple rings. Did he use more dried apple rings or more popcorn? So what they're wanting to know is which one of those fractions is bigger, 5 eighths or 1 half. So we're going to compare 5 eighths and 1 half using fraction strips. So they've already put out our 1 halfs of fraction, fraction strips here and our 5 eighths of fraction strips here. We just need to color them in. So one half would go to that line. Five eighths, I just have to color in five of them. One, two, three, four, five. And now we can see with this model very easily that the five eighths is bigger or greater than one half. So Zach used more, the five eighths was popcorn. He used more popcorn. So that is how we compare fractions using fraction strips. You just lay them out, see which one is bigger. So you're going to be saying greater than, less than, or if it's equal to. So now looking down here at the bottom, underneath the picture, it says write five fractions that are equivalent to one half. What is the relationship between the numerator and the denominator of fractions that are equivalent to one half? Okay, well remember to write equivalent fractions, you can choose any number that you want and you multiply the numerator and the denominator by that number. So say I want to choose the number two, I've got to multiply it, the numerator and the denominator times two. One times two is two, two times two is four. So I started with one half, my first equivalent fraction is 2 fourths. Then I'm going to do 1 half times 3 on the top and the bottom, which will give me 3 sixths. And then I'm going to do 1 half times 4, which will give me 4 eighths. And then I'm going to do 1 half times 5, which would give me 5 tenths. And then I need to do one more. So I'm going to do 1 half times 6, which would give me 6 twelfths. I'll write 6 twelfths down here. Now I'm not going to have enough room to write my explanation of the relationship, so I'm just going to say it. What is the relationship between the numerator and the denominator of the fractions that are equivalent to 1 half? So they want me to look at my numerator and compare it to my denominator. 1 and 2. Well, I know 1 is half of 2. Let's see if that works for the others. 2 and 4. Yes, 2 is half of 4. 3 and 6, 3 is half of 6, 4 and 8, 4 is half of 8, 5 and 10, 5 is half of 10, and 6 and 12, 6 is half of 12. So I can say the relationship between the numerator and the denominator are that the numerator is half of the denominator. Okay, so then number 2 says how many 8s are equivalent to 1 half? What that means is they want us to change 1 half into eights. So I asked myself, what did I do to this two? What do I multiply by two to get an eight? I multiply two times four to get an eight. So if I need to do the denominator times four, I also have to do my numerator times four. One times four is four. So four eighths are equivalent to one half. Number three says, how can you compare five eighths and one half without using a model. So 
So they want us to say which one's greater, 5 eighths or 1 half. I need to take what I know about common denominators, and I need to change these to have the same common denominator. So I'm going to change my 1 half into eighths so that I can actually compare. What do I do to this 2 to get an 8? I multiply times 4, just like I did up here. So since I multiply the denominator times 4, I also multiply the numerator times 4, and I get 4 eighths, just like up here. This step was kind of leading us into this next problem. So now that I have two fractions with common denominators, 5 eighths and 4 eighths, I can compare them. I know that 4 is smaller than 5, so I can say the 5 eighths is greater than the 4 eighths, which we knew was also equivalent to 1 half. So 5 eighths is greater than 4 eighths, or I could also say 5 eighths is greater than 1 half. So in order to figure that out, I had to change my 1 half into a common denominator for 5 eighths. They need to have the same denominator for you to be able to compare them. Okay, now going on to the next page, page 250, we're going to finish up this lesson 6.6 .6 by talking about what a benchmark is. It says that a benchmark is a known size or amount that helps you to understand a different size or amount. You can use one half as a benchmark to help you compare fractions. Example, use the benchmark to compare fractions. A family hiked the same mountain trail. Evie and her father hiked five twelfths of the trail before they stopped for lunch. Jill and her mother hiked nine tenths of the trail before they stopped for lunch. Who hiked further before lunch? So in other words, which one's greater, 5 twelfths or 9 tenths? So we're going to compare 5 twelfths and 9 tenths to the benchmark 1 half. So we've got two number lines here that have the benchmark 1 half marked on them. 0 and 1 and right in the middle would be 1 half. 0 and 1 right in the middle would be 1 half. So first I'm going to do the 5 twelfths. So underneath, between the 0 and the 1, they've made some fraction strips that have 12. So I'm going to color in 5 of them. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So my 5 twelfths line ends right here so I can go up and make a big mark right there. That's where 5 twelfths is, pretty close to 1 half. So 5 twelfths, though, is still a little bit smaller than 1 half. So we're going to say it's less than 1 half there. And now we're done with that model. We need to move over here and compare the 9 tenths to 1 half. So between the 0 and the 1, they've done fraction strips that are equivalent to tenths. And I need 9 tenths. So I'm going to color in 9 of them. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 6, 7, 8, 9. So that ends right here. So I can go up, follow that line, and mark where my 9 tenths is. Now I can see the 1 half is way back here, so that 9 tenths is greater than 1 half. So now that I know where they are compared to 1 half, I can easily say that since my 5 twelfths is way back here before my 1 halves, and my 9 tenths is way up here past my 1 half, then I can say that 9 tenths is greater than 5 eighths. Or written the other way, I'm sorry, not 5 eighths, 5 twelfths. Or written the other way, 5 twelfths is less than 9 tenths. So since 5 twelfths is less than 1 half and 9 tenths is greater than 1 half, 
we know 5 twelfths is less than 9 tenths. So that means that going back up to the problem, Jill and her mom hiked further before lunch. Okay, so we're going to down here then explain how we can tell that 5 twelfths is less, less than 1 half without using a model. So if we did not have a model, we want to compare 5 twelfths to 1 half. So I'm going to change my fractions to have a common denominator. So I want to change my 1 half into twelfths so that I can compare it. What do I do to the 2 to get a 12? I multiply times 6. So I'm also going to need to num do my numerator times 6. 1 times 6 is 6. Okay, so now I know 1 half is equal to 6 twelfths. So now I can compare. I'm just going to move this over here to remind myself that 6 twelfths is also the same as 1 half. Now I can compare, and I just need to look at the numerator now. 5 is less than 6. So that's how I know without using a model that 5 twelfths is less than 1 half. I just change my 1 half into twelfths so that I can actually compare. Okay, so then number 5, explain how you can tell that 7 tenths is greater than 1 half without using a model. So same principle, we need to take our 7 tenths and our 1 half and make them have the same denominator. So I'm going to change this 1 half into tenths. What do I do to the 2 to make it into a 10? I multiply by 5. So since I did the denominator times 5, I also need to do the numerator times 5. 1 times 5 is 5. So now I know that this 1 half I can say 5 tenths is equivalent to it. So now that I have two fractions with the same denominator, I can compare. So I just look at the numerators. 7 is greater than 5. So I know 7 tenths is greater than 5 tenths or 7 tenths is greater than 1 half. So again, the way that I did that was I changed my fraction, my 1 half, into tenths so that they would have the same denominator and that I can then compare. Okay, so that's lesson 6.6, .6, kind of a long lesson, but um, hopefully you can now understand how to compare fractions using benchmarks and without using models. If you're in my class, I want you to have filled out page 249 and 250 in your big math books so that I know you watched the entire video. And Write down the password monkey in your planner. Thank you. If you have any questions, please leave a message.